We interrupt this program to bring you the latest report on the China Clipper. After 18 hours at sea, the Pan American flying boat is at this moment landing safely in Pearl Harbor at Honolulu, right on schedule. In the 1950s, the world was finally at peace. There was optimism in the air and an urge to rebuild economies and lives. In 1951, an idea was born, an idea that would build a new industry. Aviation pioneer William J. Malahi and Lauren Thurston, publisher of the Honolulu Advertiser, met at the Moana Hotel in Honolulu with a vision that travel to the Pacific had huge economic potential, but some structure was needed to realize it. It took less than one year to make that happen. The age of the Pacific is with us. On January 12, 1952, California Governor and later Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Earl Warren, delivered the opening speech of the first Pacific Area Travel Conference. And there was an air of excitement mostly about it, that we were getting into something that uh, no one had ever thought of before. We're getting into it, we were creating a new industry. Within four days, PETA, the Pacific Interim Travel Association, was formed. It had a constitution, a mission, and a membership of 41. The greatest achievement was in having governments of the Pacific recognize the industry for what it was. A great economic contributor, a contributor also to uh, a peaceful existence of nations together. In 1953, PETA became PADA, the Pacific Area Travel Association, and established headquarters in San Francisco. At its second conference, Lawrence W. Lane, a young manager from a U.S. magazine called Sunset, sounded a warning. We were very much aware of, of being concerned about how tourism would affect the countries that uh, PADA was expanding into. It was a vision of the future. PADA was to take the position that quality was as important as quantity. One day, it would take the lead as both promoter and protector. The popular culture of the 50s put dreams of the lush and the exotic, the Pacific and Asia, in hearts and minds. Author James Mishner wrote of an endless ocean and the infinite specks of coral we call islands. Many years later, Mishner attributed much of the success of Pacific travel to Pada. But the region wasn't getting the attention it deserved, said Pada executive Marvin Plake. Trade magazines wouldn't even write about Hawaii. So Pada, out of necessity, created its own publication, Pacific Travel News, which lives today as Pada Compass. Pada's first consumer advertising brought more than 11,000 inquiries and proved that the Pacific Asia area could be marketed as a region. As business grew, so did Pata, and so did the variety of members, proof that the tourism industry went far beyond destinations, transportation, and hospitality. And not only internationally, but locally as well. In 1960, Pata launched its chapter network, beginning in New Zealand and Hong Kong, and growing to, at its peak, 75 local organizations around the world, serving as the industry's largest marketing network sometimes working as a bridge between local industry and government. And it actually is a very vibrant tool where we can actually take some of our concerns to the government. The magnificent new jet, with a wing spread that's bigger than the entire distance of the Wright brothers' first flight. The dawn of the jet age, and the beginning of a decade that would mean dramatic changes in culture and travel. Arrivals to Pata countries had increased tenfold in the 1950s. But how big would it get? Pata commissioned a study 
that would open the eyes of governments to the potential of tourism in their countries. The Checky Report, as it was called, was groundbreaking research, looking at issues that had never been looked at before. It had a great impact on the whole industry. Pata was a key source of information long before information age became a buzzword, and is even more so today. I'm particularly very impressed with uh, the research materials that Pata has been uh, publishing all these years, which I'm lo uh, loyally following. Before Pata, there was little recognition of travel and tourism as a field of study. We consider Pata to be the godfather of the School of Travel Industry Management. This school was something new. It looked at tourism as a total entity that was composed of many parts. We have changed our curriculum every other year as we recognize the dynamics of the travel industry. The 70s, the beginning of the era of the jumbo jet. More people traveling, more success for the Pacific Asia travel industry. But was this large-scale development sustainable? In 1973, delegates at the annual conference in Japan moved Pata from supporter of sustainable tourism to advocate, maintaining that quality development paid back good dividends. And Pata would put that concept to the test. Chiang Mai, Thailand had all of the elements of a tourist destination. It was a cultural center. It was a gateway to nature, but with no airport, very hard to reach. If a particular country wanted a certain element to be uh, developed in their country, they'd, approach, they'd come to Pata and say, can you provide some people to tell us what to do? The concept of the Pata Task Force was born. Pata sent volunteers who made recommendations on such subjects as zoning and land use, architectural and design controls, open space, cultural preservation, and the economics of building an airport. The Thai government developed Chiang Mai based largely on Pata's blueprint. Fantastic success, because you know, look at Chiang Mai now. Chiang Mai's success story set the stage for other successes. It was the end of 70s, beginning of 80s, when Pata recommend to develop the city as a city of culture. But also, through the development of the new infrastructures, we could transform a city of heritage, recognized by UNESCO, with the state-of-the-art infrastructures of entertainment, but also state-of-the-art facilities for meetings, exhibitions and conventions. The Travel Mart was founded in 1978 to bring PADA members closer to the marketplace. The purpose of it was like conducting a sales call. It's working with people that have a mutual interest. The PADA Travel Mart has provided billions of dollars in negotiated contracts between the buyers and sellers of the Asia Pacific. By the mid-80s, there was as much travel within the region as to and from it. Pata began to focus on that, and mid-decade recommissioned itself the Pacific Asia Travel Association. And in 1990, Pata adopted Direction 2000, redefining itself as the leader of and authority on Pacific Asia travel and tourism. Pata members vowed to take the lead on strategic issues, among them the environment. We have to change the way that we live. We in WWF welcome the opportunity to work together with you, the travel industry, tourist industry. Bali, Indonesia, 1991. Pada devoted its annual conference to tourism and the environment, introducing its Code for Environmentally Responsible Tourism, which served as a benchmark for the industry worldwide. I think this conference, I'm confident, has given Pata a fantastic opportunity to again take action and get into the act and do something about a problem that indeed not only faces Pata, but every industry and indeed the whole world. What are you doing to support the local environment and culture? And Pata kept up the momentum. Addressing tourism and heritage. Conducting responsible tourism and adventure travel conferences in Marts. In 2008, Pata addressed climate change. But tourism isn't all about grand plans. It deeply affects local communities. We work at the grassroots. We, we help people at the bottom end of the, of the, of the tourism chain uh, to move up. The Pata Foundation was born in 1984 to offer help in areas that might not attract the attention of large donors, conservation and heritage, local crafts communities, and education. 
and to raise funds to help the victims of tragedies. In the 90s, the world and the travel industry were experiencing profound changes. This whole revolution in the Pacific Rim, this whole revolution of enterprise. Pata looked at economics and globalization and a more distant future. We've got to develop and we will develop relatively cheap forms of space transportation. There's no reason why space travel should be any more expensive than jet transportation. The energy requirements are just about the same. And Pata members learned early on about this new phenomenon called the Internet. In July, I estimated one billion people will be on the Internet in the year 2000. In 2010, Pata developed one of the most sophisticated web presences of any organization in the industry. And it was a time when more countries were opening their doors to tourism as a way to prosperity. Pata worked to develop new markets in developing countries. The Bureau wanted to thank the Pacific Asian Travel Association, or PADA, for helping to develop tourism in Chuk. So the people of Chuk decided to give PADA an island. To Pata. But the euphoria would not last. I've been hearing on the floor in the past few minutes, crazy, insane. In July of 1997, Asian economies collapsed. But long term, the picture was bright. By the turn of the century, arrivals would approach 96 million, and it was clear that business was shifting to Pata's world. In 1998, Pata moved its headquarters to Bangkok. And in 2001, celebrated its first 50 years in Honolulu, where it was born, and in Kuala Lumpur. But an industry, already stunned by the Asian financial crisis, had little time to catch its breath. As many as 6.5 million travel industry jobs were lost in 2001 and 2002. Pata assisted with a task force to help Bali recover and to prepare other Pata members for the crises that nobody knew were still on the horizon. Welcome back, will you be and in 2003, Pata led the campaign to bring travelers back, enlisting its members to create a consumer communications program called Project Phoenix, recognizing Pata as the place to go to make sense of travel advisories and for other information. But the momentum of growth could not be stopped. China and India were rising. A growing middle class in Asia was looking to travel beyond the region's borders. 2004 saw Pata change its mission statement to include tourism to, from, and within Asia Pacific. Pata was established 60 years ago to encourage people to travel from North America to the Pacific. Now, the new world order is that China and India and some of the Asian countries will play a leading role in world tourism. In 2007, Pata became the first travel-related international organization officially registered in China. It's got twice the population of the European Union. You could take each province and you could treat that as a country. We shall be daring mighty things. Year after year, Pata has brought together leaders of the world in the tourism industry. Pata has been concerned with the future of sustainable tourism. Leaders of the travel industry. In 2011, Pata returns to Beijing for its annual conference, celebrating 60 years of bringing leaders together to explore new opportunities. And it's a very, very clear message for us that we have to try and provide understandings and, and, and provide data which can be customized for everyone's needs. What we're doing through Tiger is 
actually empowering that network to share information. It's about bringing not only information and intelligence to the membership faster, it's about expanding the range of those indicators that tell us what's going on out there. PADA has always been a social network and I think as we look upon it today, it is now a digital social network as well. So I think as PADA progresses, it's going to be vital that we stay in touch with all the digital media that's available to us. I think the task forces bring out the best of PADA. There are lots of emerging destinations who are our members who need our support. And this is something that the PATA volunteers and the expertise within PATA can bring out and help those destinations. On sustainability, PATA has a good opportunity to take the lead. We really um, uh, are heading into uh, look at a more holistic uh, approach to uh, our relationship with the natural and social environment. We're moving away from just looking at how many people are coming, how many foreign arrivals. What does this mean for the quality of life of the individual? We will encourage the Chinese, the Indians and, uh, and other Asian destinations also to travel beyond their borders and make it two-way tourism. Pata can harness the creativity, innovativeness and the energy that we find in our youth today. Pata has definitely driven me to want to be in this industry. For 60 years, PADA has been about doing business. Around 90% has come either directly or indirectly through my affiliation with PADA. It has been about learning. It gives us a really good, close understanding of the issues uh, that uh, the industry is facing um, and to really understand some of the strategies and tactics PADA is working with their members on uh, and where we can, we can assist and help. PADA has been about networking. It has a great worldwide reputation for communicating with people, for networking with people, and for opening doors for people. I can be able to get my foot in the door, meet people, and they can help me push me in the direction that I need to go in. PADA has been about friendships that last a lifetime. I can say I have friends now in 44 countries, and, and can, can the internet give that to you? I don't think so.